Let's talk about some lenders that will lend up to five and a half times income. Now, I have done a video on one lender, but let's name some more lenders that will do this, okay? And talk about the differences and talk about why one lender may be better than the other or what they can do. Um, I think it'll be useful. Um, yes, so let's go through it. It is for information purposes only, so it's not advice. So you should always seek an independent mortgage broker for advice, but I'll catch you on the video. Hi, it's Pyam here from Niche Advice. Hope you're well. Um, I thought we'll name some names. Um, I see a lot of videos and I probably am a culprit of a little bit wishy-washy, a little bit, well, you should do this and then, but you know, you really should approach me and I know everything. So I thought I'll, uh, I'll name some lenders, put it out there for yourselves, give you some information around maximum affordability and some of the lenders that are generally quite good at getting high income multiples. Now, this is not an endorsement of me with any of those lenders, okay? It's not me giving advice. This is for information purposes only. I've been very, very clear. Always, you should seek independent mortgage advice. You could go and approach these lenders direct, but I think it's the wrong option because I think you need to speak to a mortgage broker preferably independent mortgage broker who has access to the whole of the market and can evaluate various lenders, evaluate various criteria, and evaluate you as a person and match you with the right product. Right, enough of that. Let's start naming some of the lenders. Lender number one, it's nationwide. Now, I've actually done a video on this, a full video on this product, but it's called the Helping Hand product, right? So the Helping Hand product was set up for first-time buyers. You will need to take out a longer fee, uh, term fix, which is a five year fixed or a 10 year fixed. One of you needs to be earning 31,000 pounds or a combined income of 50,000. So they are very, very important. Um, it's not more importantly open to the other schemes like help to buy. So you can't combine it with help to buy, right to buy, shared ownership. So that's very important about uh, the helping ad. But they are doing it. It's not a gimmick. It's been done. They're right in that type of business. And yeah, so I've, you've got to go through the whole thing. And I think it's worth me touching on this. You've got to always run affordability checks, credit checks, all of that has to fit up. They're actually quite good because majority of the high income multiple lenders out there, what they will do is they'll, you know, you've got to be earning 75K, you've got to be earning 80K. So they've positioned themselves for the higher I said, earners, right? Or people that have got a greater level of deposits, okay? Where... This product's quite good is it will go up to 90% loan to value, which is quite unusual. So someone with 10% deposit in theory can get five and a half times income, right? So um, yeah, so that's that. Um, like I said, seek independent advice, but that's number one. Number two, let's name some names. Number two, let's talk about Santander. So Santander historically have actually been quite a good lender when it comes to income multiples. I remember six, seven years ago, they used to go up to six times income. And that's now been reduced to five and a half times income. And it is quite a restrictive criteria line. So you need to have 25% deposit. And I think you need to have a combined income of a hundred thousand pounds. So you need to be high earners as well as the 25% deposit. Okay. Um, where they're quite good. And this is where Criteria comes in, and this is where brokers come into the place, guys. So I'll give you an example. They're quite good. Although they got this restrictive criteria on, on a purchase as such, if you're looking to remortgage without capital raising, so if you're looking to do a like-for-like, like, your mortgage is 150, and you just want to swap rates and just get a, swap the product, then they don't have that restrictions of earnings. So you could be earning whatever and they will go up to five and a half times income as long as you're not looking to change things too much. You're not looking to capital raise. So that's not a bad option, guys. So that's, that's again, that's something to think about. So what's the downside? That's all great, Prime. Thank you very much. Take care. But the downside is all lenders have got a downside. If they didn't, I wouldn't be in business. Um, their downside, I'll give you an example. Let's talk about this because this is a perfect lender to talk about. Let's say you've got a 20K debt on your credit report still showing. Let's say you're even going to pay that debt off on completion of the mortgage. So before completion of the mortgage, you're going to pay it off. If it's showing on your credit report, lenders like Santander, and there's a number of them out there, they will still include it. So even if you say, I'm going to pay it off, they say, no, if it's showing on your credit report, that means you've got it. That means we take it on affordability. So those headline rates, that graphic that I've just done, and you've clicked on YouTube, 
It's a bit of a nonsense because they always run affordability checks. It's to do with incoming and outgoing and how they perceive debt and also how they perceive income. So I'll give you another example with Santander. If you've got non-regular income and that's probably classed as uh, not showing on, on your monthly pay slip, so it's not showing every month, okay, they tend to take only 65% of it. So that's important. So that five and a half times, you may think, oh yes, five and a half times my income's this, but they're only taking 65% of it. Another thing, they will take pension commi uh, commitments as a commitment. So it's almost like, you know, if 200 pounds going for a pension, they'll take that as a commitment, a monthly commitment coming out of your wages, which a lot of lenders don't, right? So all of a sudden, if you are a you know, civil servant, you work for the NHS, you're a teacher, whatever, most of those people, thankfully, get paid really well in all they contribute quite a lot with their, with their pensions, okay? And obviously they get top-ups and so forth. So although that headline five and a half times might be there, I'm not, I'm not sure too many teachers earn 100,000 back, might, might do though, um, that headline of five and a half times could be hampered with these other criterias. So this is why it's important you should speak to a independent mortgage broker and not just go direct or not just try to go on the comparison sites and try and do it and not just say, thank you very much, Prime. You've told me two lenders, I'm off. You should wait around until I talk to you about the other lenders. Lender number three. This lender is a, a little bit of left field. Now, they are only accessible via brokers as far as I'm concerned or as far as I'm aware. So you, you can't access the lender direct. And there's a few of them within this category. If you do not fit the high street, then this is a good lender that will still give you up to five and a half times income. Standard criteria, you need to be earning over 60,000 uh, pounds. Oh, the lender's name is Aldermore Bank, right? 60,000 pounds, over 60,000 pounds. But what they will do is a little bit different to the high street. Why would you go there? Well, the rates, are a lot higher than the high street. Well, Pyam, you're not really selling this well. Well, first of all, I'm not trying to sell anything. This is for information purposes only. However, if you are self-employed and you want to work off your net profits plus your salary, they're a good lender because they will look at that. If you want them to consider your latest year's accounts rather than an average of the last two years, which majority of the high street do, and certainly the two other lenders that I've spoken about now do. In fact, with Santander, they've got some restrictions on 75% loan to value on self-employed anyway. They're probably not the best lender for self-employed right now. But going back to Aldermore, good with self-employed, good the way they, they work out the income. They're good with credit profiles. Um, if you've had blemishes on your credit file and have been resolved, they've had some issues, they are more... Um, they're manual underwriters, so they will they will look at things a little bit more carefully. Um, they're a non they're a specialist lender, right? But they will go up to five and a half times income. So often, what I found where they could be quite good is if you want a higher loan to value, um, you're will you know you're a halfway house, a stepping stone between the between them and the high street, and you just need two years buy the property. Prime, I've only started my business last year. I've done really well. I haven't got two years accounts. I can't go to the to the high street guys. They're a good fit. They may, they may be over there. Oh, I had some problems in the past. That's all been resolved. There may be a good lender halfway house to go there. But obviously, um, the good thing about this lender is they're only accessed by brokers. So um, essentially, the broker can assess your case and evaluate where you go. And there are a few other lenders in that pile that will do higher income multiples. So good lender, good option, and it's just something to be there. Uh, next lender is, um, who should we talk about? Let's talk about Halifax. Halifax, they'll go up to five and a half times income. They've only just announced this recently. They've copied, they've copied Santander a little bit. So it's 75% loan to value. I think you only need to be earning 75 only. You need to be earning 75,000 pounds. So 25% deposit, 75, um, 75,000 pounds uh, income. They're a good lender, uh, main, main high street lender, part of the Lloyds Banking Group. So why wouldn't you go there? Well, sometimes uh, they're not that great. Um, where they're not that great, for example, is if you've got any property income and it's got a mortgage on that property, they won't take it. If you have got secondary jobs, so not secondary jobs, sorry, secondary income like uh, commissions, bonuses and stuff, they're not great. They normally take a percentage of it rather than 100% of it. 
They are good on second jobs. However, generally, I think you need to be in your second job for over six months to 12 months with them. Um, so yes, that is an option. One thing I have to touch on, although these lenders are now trying to pull this business in at higher loan to value, um, um, sorry, higher income multiples, they are penalizing the people that don't earn 75K or 100K. A lot of them have reduced their income multiples on the lower earners, which I don't actually agree with. Um, but they must have done some of their risk analysis and said these are the type of businesses that we're looking for. So, mm, and, and Halifax, Halifax is one of them. Next lender um, that is um, that we can think of. Let me just have a think. Uh, Barclays, yeah. So Barclays historically used to go up to five and a half times income for people that were premier clients of theirs, uh, premier mortgages. However, uh, they've changed that rule now. Um, you still need to be earning, I think, over seventy-five thousand pounds. You still need to have. Um, you know, uh, a chunky deposit with them, but they can consider it. So where they're quite good is if you've been receiving bonus, for example, for the last two years, uh, and you can prove that, they'll take an average of that. So they're quite good on things like that. Where they're not good on their affordability is, for example, on their affordability model, they'll take into account things like uh, council tax payments. Okay, so, you know, sometimes, you know, if you've got, if, you, if you're paying quite a lot, if you're in a, one of the unfortunate reasons on a council that's paying a high council, they take that as commitments on their affordability. Um, they're a little bit niggly on, on certain things, but they're generally, they're, an, they're another lender, but again, quite restrictive. So um, that's about it. I think that's the list of it. So um, like I said, look, I may have got some of this stuff wrong myself. You know, it's quite complicated. Everything specific. Now, just because, like I said, just because they go up to five and a half, or say they go up to five and a half times income, it doesn't necessarily necessarily mean that they will. Um, that's to do with, and just because they do, it doesn't mean that you're they're the right lender for you. They may not do the type of property that you're going to buy. They may not like your income profile. Okay, they may not like your residency. They may not like, uh, you know, um, the the person, the the second person that you're buying with, or somebody else you're buying with. Um, they may not like, you know, the source of deposit. They may not like, you know, uh, if you're getting a gift from somebody. They may not like your credit profile. So, look, I've given you some of the names, and they're out there. However, go and speak to a independent mortgage broker. There are lots of them out there, right? Niche advice is one. However, there are some really good ones out there. There are some free ones, there's some paid ones, there's some good ones, there's some useless ones, they're all out there, but go and seek an independent mortgage broker, because they could tell you this stuff, but they can tell you this stuff a lot more in detail, I've just scratched the surface, because I know you really wanted to know who will lend what, but um, I've given you some names out there, there are some more, um, and this is not a list that, you know, it's, that's it, there are some more lists out there, uh, lenders out there, but I hope you've enjoyed it, like and subscribe if you have stuck around let's do a test shall we um i don't know let's do a test if you've stuck around here let me know what you guys think um let me let me know that you stuck around to this point because there's a big drop up when you look at the statistics right you see me waffling 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 and it sort of dives towards the end but um anyway i'll catch you on the next video take care yourselves the content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.